G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. This is going to be a bit of a double tutorial if you're looking to get a little paper crafty, but I will start off by stamping and doing the regular uh, little fun mixed media bit, but I am going to get to a, it's such a crossover, it's like paper crafting, it's stamping illustration, it's a concept stamp, to, uh, stamp set tutorial, it's also a tag Tuesday. This, is, this video is just going to be everything all rolled into one because that's just how I felt this morning uh, when I was putting it together. If you're wondering why I've got this on here, I'm playing a bit of an I Spy game. Can you see the bunch of pieces that are actually on this paper? This is what I prepared earlier. <laughs> I wanted to show you that they're from this paper because I didn't want to have to um, stamp this out and make you watch me cut it. I know I could edit it out, but I thought that'd be fun just to show you that they all came from this piece of paper and we will end up using those um, later in the video to make this curish little tag. And um, why does this exist? Who knows? It could be a tag for uh, the top of a present. You could shove it into your journal, but it's three dimensional, so it's probably not gonna work like that. Um, but these are just fun paper crafty little things that I like to play with. I've even got some copper wire on here today because I had it handy, so we might even have a look at that. But I'm gonna show you how to stamp this out first. This is from my Concepts 3 stamp set, and this is the six by eight set. Um, there's a four by six and there's a six by eight. Right now, as I upload this video, there's none of these left, um, so, don't worry about trying to go and find them. Uh, eventually they'll be uploaded to my brand new website that I'm coming out with, <laughs> uh, which is also not ready right now. So um, don't worry about that. If you have something similar, you can use that, or if you can just, um, you could cut magazine images out, or if you have another face stamp set, um, or you've got little flower pieces of die cuts or something, I'm sure there's a substitute for literally everything today. Um, I want to just want to show you how I stack these because it's quite a simple, little project. I actually have a couple paper stacked things around my house as decoration. Like I have a Wally and Eve one that I have in a frame that I, like a shadow box that I keep on my shelf. Um, so for me, these aren't typically like journaling things. I do love a good tag. You know, I love to play mixed media on a tag, but they're not, um, they're not something I'm trying to get into the journal. The only time I think I've really ever put a paper stacking thing in a journal was on the front of my travel journal. Um, and because it was on the front, it didn't really matter. It wasn't bulking up the inside. It was just decorative on the outside. But even then, it was just one It was one stack high. This is three stacks high. So we'll get onto that in a second. First, I want to show you how to stamp it out. Here are a couple of my tests that I came up with earlier today. I've got everything on my acrylic block already, so I don't really need to, um, to prepare anything. I've, I've come prepared today, which is nice, because I do just want to kind of go through the video real time. I think that's what I was trying to say earlier. <laughs> <laughs> there might still be parts that I cut out. Uh, maybe it'll take me a little bit to twist this wire or something, but I want to go through it uh, real time just because I think it's nicer at this point to do tutorials that way. I've also not um, added music to some of my more recent videos, especially tutorials. And that wasn't because I was being lazy. I still pay for my music subscription. It was um, because some people don't like the music. It can be very distracting. And I wanted to see if I even liked um, having it a bit quieter for the fact that I could put my own music on in the background. Some people also don't like that, but it's one of those things where you can't literally please everyone. So um, I'm just trying it out. I can't say I'll commit to it, but I'm trying it out for now. First thing I'm going to do is take the flower from the set. I'll put the set here, just in case you do have it. You know what, I'll probably take it out of the bag because that glare might be annoying for you. I've also got a Tim Holtz... Um, oh, that paper is actually from a Tim Holtz paper pad. It's this one, I'll grab it. It's the Paper Stash Memoranda. And this is the 12 by 12. So that's where I got the paper from. Beautiful paper, especially for this little thing. I think it came out so darling that I just had to show you. So I've got my Hobonichi here. This is my sketchbook, my play around book, my ideas book. I think, should I show you in this? Oh, you know what? I'll just stamp it on a tag. Maybe that'll be easier to see. It's the same size anyway. I might actually zoom you in a second. Hang on. There we go. All right, I'm gonna grab my, I think, what do I want first? I think I want the head first. So I've got this body. I'm only gonna use this small head. I tried to do it with the big one, but it just didn't look, the proportions didn't look my favorite. It didn't look wrong because this whole thing kind of looks weird anyway. I'm just going to stamp um, onto this Distress Ink in Victorian Velvet. I'm only going to stamp the head part. I don't really want the body, and I might even just uh, wipe off some of that ink on the neck. I'm going to stamp it three quarters of the way up my tag, because I do need to put on some other pieces as well. Now, sometimes when I'm doing this stamping, I would second generation stamp it, which means, uh, or ghost stamping, some people call it. It means I would stamp it over here, first to remove a lot of the ink and then I would stamp it again on my page. 
And that's for when I'm illustrating. Can you see how light that is? A lot of why I use stamp sets and the way they're designed they are, uh, the way that they are, sorry, is because I like to use them as a base and I like to illustrate over the top of them. So if they're stamped out really light, the base disappears quite easily and you're not left with any of those ink lines that you don't decide to, um, to draw over. If you're trying to do it over this, you really do have to be careful to cover everything. And it's not so much of a base that's going to disappear at that point, so much as it is, um, you know, the underdrawing that you can still see. It's personal preference. I don't always do that, but I thought I'd mention it because I, typ I typically do. Um, so this is the head. Now I'm going to grab this flower. It's a nice flat kind of dimensional flower, meaning it's like very even and evenly spaced. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna put it over this. I can kind of see that, that chin is gonna go here somewhere, so I'm just gonna wipe off a little bit uh, before I stamp it, because I don't want it to cross too much. It still might over the top. Like I said, this is just the part where I'm stamping it out to show you um, the actual paper stacking. All of these pieces stamped separately, and I stamped them all around the page to find the prettiest um, little motifs to keep inside the set, which I'll show you that uh, in a second as well. So I've got the flower, uh, I've got the head, I need the little tea cozy, uh, little teapot thing. You know what, I might put the spout on first. So I've got this spout here. I'm gonna have it angling up. I'm also gonna wipe off a bunch of that ink so that I can get it a nice flat angle to the top of the head. I'm gonna stamp this little teapot topper. Did I call it a tea cozy? It's not a tea cozy, it's the topper. <laughs> and this is the handle, this little part here. You can see I've got most of my stamps like double backed on these sets. It's just because as I'm playing, I don't like to peel them off and stick them back on, peel them off, stick them back on. I'll have a ton all over my blocks because when I'm just playing with the ideas, I don't need to um, keep everything super clean. Even when I'm doing it clean, I promise you, I do not bother that much. <laughs> if you've ever seen my journals in real life, you've seen there's ink stains everywhere, fingerprints everywhere, like I'm messy. And this one I'm going to stamp just off to the side on the back of her head. Oh, I didn't do it quite well. There you go. And I have one more, but before I do that, I'm gonna to need to put my guide down because it's actually on the stem. So this is where the idea of stamping your illustrations, um, you know, you kind of leave the stamps behind at this point and you start adding in bits that you think would, would help. Especially things like this, you can connect parts that you feel like you've kind of wiped away or missed. I'm not gonna go that deep today, but I do need to put a stem for my flower. So I'm going to ink up this leaf. This leaf is different on either end, so that means I can stamp out uh, one end for it to look a certain way, and then I can turn the leaf around and stamp it so that it looks different on the other side. I thought about making a symmetrical leaf, but then I thought, well, this is kind of a twofer, right? It's the same leaf, but it'll look different if you flip it. So there you go. That is exactly what I ended up creating. Before I stop with this one, because I was going to do it in this and kind of show you how I'd paint it, but um, it's not a super difficult thing, so I think I can just show you on here. I'm going to grab my brush. I've got a bit of water over here in this watercolor palette. I actually thought what would be really cute for this is because she's a little teapot flower, would be to kind of messy run some watercolor over the top. So it almost looked coffee stained. Even if you could just splatter some of it on there, if you had a, um, where else could I get it? I need a, I need something that's kind of circular but hollow at this point. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to find that. I should just spill my coffee onto it. I've got a coffee off the side here. If you had, say, like, a coffee cup, you could just dip some of your, like, I've got a glue stick lid here. I'm just going to swirl that around and kind of make these coffee ring stains. That's obviously not the size of a coffee cup, but you get what I mean. I thought it'd be cute to kind of um, splatter and play with the color there. And then as you came to the flower, to change up the color. So I'm going to put pink on here and just kind of mush that around. I don't think I've ever said the word mush on YouTube before. Since this feels like a first. <laughs> um, so the coloring style is very, very loose. And then even as I come down to the stems, just kind of blocking in the color, but being really, really messy about it and then grabbing some of that and flicking it on there. This is not everyone's favorite thing, but this is why I love stamping illustrations, because if you didn't like how that looked, and you thought, you know what, you know, I tried it, thanks James, hate the idea, um, that's completely fine. You can take your stamps and stamp it out again in like a minute flat. So this is why um, the idea of concepting it out first 
is fun, but also when you're actually creating, if you've made a mistake, it's the most simple thing to restart. Um, unless you've stamped out like 60,000 things. But even then, still quicker than drawing it. So um, that's that. I would typically let this dry and um, my, my suggestion would be to pick out some of the details that you wish to draw. Some people don't like to pick out the details or they find it stressful. So you could just leave it as it is. But I do think it's really effective, especially here um, in the sample that I created. I've actually just picked out the eye detail. Um, just so that if you were to look closely at it, you could see that she does have her eye in there because this is stamped out pretty plain and there's not a lot of detail in there. That's completely up to you though. Otherwise, I think this just looks... Um, this this one doesn't look great. I like the idea of it. It would look great in my journal if I did it the way... Um, if I did it really neat. But yeah, I wanted to share that idea with you just in case you're not into paper stacking. But um, if you are, this is where we're at. I'm going to zoom you out again so you can see everything. Okay, so for this part I'm going to need my paper that I want to stamp onto. If patterns aren't your thing, this would also work really well with colours. Just like plain coloured cardboard. It doesn't have to be cardboard, cardstock I should say. You do want something sturdy though, you really um, might struggle with paper for this. So um, I would recommend something that is um, cardstock or cardstock adjacent. A distant relative of cardstock, <laughs> if you will. Um, you're going to use a manila tag or wherever you want to put it. Um, if you do want to use this um, and something that you might be able to display or, you know, put around somewhere in your studio or in your home or... Uh, I, I don't know why you would, but if you do and uh, you want to put it in a shadow box, this would be a great time to measure out the size of the backing of the shadow box. So if you've got a 4x6, then do this on a 4x6. That way you'll be able to pop it straight in there and it'll be ready to um, display. Otherwise, if you do it on this, then you might need to mount this onto the 4x6 and you might be doubling up um, a background there. It could also be nice, but... Oh, you know what? I've got, a, I've got two examples here. I'm going to show you. I lied. I've got three examples. This is the one that I display in my home. This is a paper stacking I did back in 2015 of a scene from WALL-E, which is one of my favorite um, Disney Pixar movies. This is from Finding Nemo. This I think I did on a Tag Tuesday, did I not? This was um, when I did the Disney Villains Tag Tuesday, and this is Dala, Fish Murderer, <laughs> from Finding Nemo. This is so fun. This is the same, I'm going to be using this today, the same glossy accents are in this little plastic bag here with the dead fish. And um, Oliver just went playing with that wire, so I still have all these same supplies. Um, but yeah, so this was one of the ones that I made in that video, and this actually just kind of sticks up on my uh, one of my shelves in my studio, just because I love to look at it. I think it's really fun. And then this is probably the only place in my journal that I've put paper stacking that's dimensional. Um, but like I said, it was on the front. So can you see my front cover of my travel journal to Japan? Is There's a stacked image on top. So I won't show you that. That's still a secret. <laughs> Might be a secret for much longer. But those are kind of how I see paper stacking. For me, it's more about the fun of it. If I really like it, I will find a way to put it, put it up in my house or something. But otherwise, it's just a fun project for me. You also could learn some valuable things about layering and how that works because when all these pieces are stamped on, so you can see I've just taken the stamp, each piece that we use to stamp it out, I've stamped it wherever I liked the look of something. This one's going to be completely different to this one because I stamped them both on the same page, so I got different effects. If you can be really clever about it, can you see how, you know, you, you with a wow, with a clear acrylic block and a clear photopolymer stamp, you can actually see right through it. So if you are trying to capture something specific, like for me, I saw this and it said day four and it was relevant to something that I was thinking about. So I thought, well, why don't I try and capture day four in there? Um, if there was something that, you know, perhaps you had photos that you wanted to do this with too. I've done this with, um, I've done this with patent papers and I've done it with solid papers and um, I've done it I've done it with a bunch of things, but there was only one other project where I was actually specific about the parts of photos that I was cutting out, but it wasn't with stamping. But I imagine this, this could work exactly the same way. Like her head, the one that I stamped out for this one, this one here said um, 1912 and it said March, which I thought was kind of relevant, even though it's not 1912. Um, but this one I stamped her head out so that it covered this head. That way I thought, well, she could have a face on it even if I didn't want to draw her face. Oh, I should mention one of the other things I did with this that I won't be doing with this is I have a gray wash of a water brush. I went around every single edge. So I would pull out some of the details with 
pencil, like her eyes and her nose and her lips. But the flower, I would add a little bit of dimension on there. I added a bit of shadow. I even colored in her whole hair section. You can see here that's all been colored in with this gray wash of a brush. And that was just to add a bit of difference. Otherwise it can all look very flat, ironically, even though it's stacked. So <laughs> let's get rid of this. You can see where all of that came from. Um, really great to uh, use up those papers that kind of sit around and don't have a purpose, which, um, you know, I have a lot of scrapbooking paper and I don't scrapbook, so this is a good project for me to use up some of that. And yeah, let's stack this. The one thing I use to do this, two things I use, glossy accents, which there must be a better way, but this is the strongest thing that will stick copper wire to anything in my studio. I have other matte medium, but this one just works so well, I don't bother that it dries really glossy. Um, and I use these foam adhesive, is that what they're called? Foam adhesive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some little squares and some little dots. I like them in different sizes because some pieces are really fiddly and small and some are really big. What are we going to start with? I think the first thing I did is put the head on top of the flower. I should zoom you back in again so you can really get a good look at this. Oh, if you still want to do this but you don't want to stack it like dimensionally, you could just glue it in the same way that we stamped it. You could just glue that into your journal really flat and that would also be really pretty. That wouldn't bulk it up too much. Um, and in that case, you could use paper as well. It doesn't have to be cardstock. Cardstock is just for the dimensional stacking, but put her head on the flower first. So I'm gonna grab a tiny little dot. I'm gonna put that on the bottom of her chin because I think that's probably the only part that's gonna cross over. I'm gonna pull the bottom of that off and I'm just gonna look at it and kind of angle it the way that I want. I might wanna tip it back a bit. I might wanna tip it forward. I've kept more of a neck on this piece. Uh, when you are cutting this off the back of your uh, whatever paper you're cutting this off of, you might want to leave a little bit of a neck. It's always a little easier. And then if I can see there's another piece, uh, there's a part under there that it, it's kind of flimsy, I'll put another anchor point by adding another foam dot just behind it. See how that pops out there? I didn't do a great job. Don't push anything down too hard until you're certain. So I always kind of place things, and then once I'm happy with it, I'll push it down. Because these can, I mean, it depends on what brand you get. I think these American crafts, they can be super, super sticky, <laughs> which is great. But, you know, you might want to proceed with caution, which I never do. So who am I to say anything? Anyway, let's put another foam dot. I want to dimension this one on top as well. So I'm going to put this kind of angled to the back, I think. But I'm going to put a small foam dot on the side of each part there. Because I know that part's going to touch her head. You only want to put the foam wherever it's going to overlap. I can still see I've, I've done a terrible job. Of course, this just so you know, the worst time you do anything will be the time you demonstrate it. <laughs> That's just a fact. There's no getting around that. It's rule. So I'm going to put that kind of angled off. I still want to see a part of this head, so that's why I'm going to choose to angle it off to the side a little bit. It looks super cute like that, I could just leave it. I didn't actually, on here you can see, I didn't actually um, put the puffy dots on these spouts and the handle, I just used glue. I've got a really cheap disappearing glue here, probably should use something more substantial, but I like a dry glue because I'm super messy. So I'm going to put it on the front of that handle at the top and the back of the handle at the bottom. Because what I'm going to do is angle this behind her head at the top and then on her neck at the bottom. I like that it kind of comes out of the back and sits over the front. That just seems to work for me. And there are her handles on there. And see, because it's on the second layer, because it's on her head and her head is already popped up, it still looks dimensional even though it's only attached. You could glue that to her face before you start, but I, uh, I tend not to worry about the order of what I do things in usually can be fixed if I've made a mistake. I'm going to get the spout and put glue on the front of the spout because I'm also going to tuck that behind her head. This glue is not like super fast drying so you can place it wherever you want, have a look and if you don't like it you can change the angle of it. I'll always pretty much um, fiddle around with something I rarely get it right the first time. And then once you're happy just pinch it, push it, poke it, stick it down nice and firm. I think that's it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> Done. Bye. <laughs> uh, no, we've still got two of these leaves, which we need the stem to attach to. And this is where, um, on the sample piece, I used a piece of copper wire. This isn't like strict copper wire, I don't think. This is 24 gauge wire. Um, it's a craft wire. So I'm going to 
pull a piece off, like a long enough piece. I don't even remember how long the other piece I had was. I usually cut this with scissors, but I don't know where my other scissors are right now that I cut, because I don't use good scissors to cut this a lot of the time. I was going to say all the time, but that's a lie. Sometimes I use good scissors. <laughs> um, but I'm, I, you can twist it off. It's 24 gauge, so it's actually quite um, pliable. So I'm going to pull it out really, really straight, and then I want to pull these ends together. I didn't measure this length out. I really honestly don't know how long it was. Just long enough, I guess. I'm going to pinch that top together, and then I'm going to start twisting. This is so optional, it's not funny. Obviously everything is, but I, um, I don't know. I just really love the look of it. It's so... It just, it just does things for me. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but I just, I'm enjoying it. It just feels really crafty, but without having to do the most. Sometimes as I'm twisting it, I'll actually take one wire and then just wrap it around the other one. And then I'll just make sure, because if you do that, it'll really shorten the length of that one wire. Then I'll twist them again. And as I come down the bottom, I'll use the other wire and do the same thing. And that way you get these really nice little um, extra loops that look different from the twisting. All personal preference, obviously. And if you don't want to do this, just draw a line on your page like we did before. Just a straight up and down vertical line. It doesn't have to be neat or good. It just has to look like a stem for a flower to pop out of. Don't worry about the ends being um, exposed or sharp or anything. Look, I've just twisted one off now. <laughs> uh, because that's the, that's the part we're going to put underneath the flower, so you could even leave it, like, real weird at the end. The, that's why we have the loop at the bottom, because that's the part that's going to be on the outside, so it'll be nice and safe, unless it all comes apart, in which case, be careful, because this becomes a really weird weapon. <laughs> Alright, so i got this here. I'm going to have to glue this down, because uh, this is what I want to stick everything else on top of, and I can let it dry whilst I'm gluing it. This is where that glossy accents really comes in handy because I just put it down where it's flat and then I'll kind of, um, I'll just fill in bits. Oh, it's not going to be, it's not going to be pleasant. Wherever it's hitting the tag, I'm going to kind of, I don't know, it's like I, I make a, a blob over the top of it <laughs> and I just hope it's going to seal it to the paper. It will move around and it will get messy. There must be a better way for um, people to do this, but I don't particularly bother. I used to have the Tim Holtz matte medium. That would have done a perfect job as well, but, you know, if it's not if it's not going to bother me, I don't let it bother me. Does that make sense? Like, even when I'm showing a tutorial, I feel like I have to show you what I would do. Because people ask, like, what did you do? How did you do that? And a lot of the time, like, I don't want to make people care about something that I don't actually care about either. But there are days that I will care. And then I'll find an answer and then I'll say, there you go, that's what I meant. <laughs> so anyway, while we're doing that, let's stick two of these leaves in. We do want them to go different ways. So I'm gonna stick it into a part of that glue. Yeah, there you go. Just on different part blobs of that glue, I'm gonna stick either side in. And I'm gonna carefully move this away and let it dry a little bit. And it'll get, it'll like, it'll dry cement. Cement hard, it's crazy. So this is the part where we attach it to the tag. And there's only one more thing to think about really, and that is how many layers did we create? So we've got this base layer here, we have one stack of, um, of puff, and then we have another stack of puff. But we're going to have to put another stack of puff to... Why am I calling it puff now? <laughs> we have one more little puffy sticker, foam sticker, I forgot the word for it. You've got one more um, foam sticker at the bottom, I shouldn't have taken that off because it's going to get, it's going to collect dust. Um, that'll attach it to our tag. So we've got one one base level, so one that attaches to the, the tag, one step up there, and one step up there. So there's three total, which means on every stack of foam, if you want it to touch and be really, really secure, because you could just put it down like that, it's fine. It would be a little flimsy up here, but I like to be extra sure. On every piece where we put foam before, we want to make sure that there's three levels of foam total. So we've already got one level here on this face, but if I wanted to put it on this part of the face here, I'm gonna have to put one level which would make it in line with that base. I'm gonna peel up some of that, um, I'm gonna peel off the backing. I'm gonna add another foam dot to the back of that so it's stacked twice as high. And that way we've got this matching this and both will attach 
um, to anchor it down to the tag. Which means if I want to put it on the really, really top level, this part of the, what's it called? I've lost all words now, the teapot topper. That means I've got to put three foam dots stacked on top of each other to make sure that it reaches the base. So that's why I love using these little ones because for parts like this where it's a fiddly little bit, you can use three. And this is just for longevity. So if you don't really care, if you're just making it for fun, don't bother stacking too many of them up because it'll hold up itself. But if you really want it to last, you're gonna have to just make sure that wherever you stack your foam, if it's three levels high, you need to make sure that you know on your top level, you've got three stacks of foam to meet the base again. Um, if you put two, it just wouldn't touch the tag. There'd just be one floating. So it's pretty easy to figure out because I don't think most people would put more than three or four levels of foam. But here again, this this spout, I would probably want to put one right here just so it could anchor it nicely. Um, and the spout is on the same level as the face, so I need two to touch the base. That almost rhymed, didn't it? <laughs> so I'm going to put one on the spout and then another one on top. And it's great because this foam stuff is so sticky, it will stick to itself. And now all of the backing is peeled off. Stands to reason that I can just pull my tag back into the frame, find the way that I want to stick it on there, and place it down. And there you go. See how I'm pushing on it and it's not it's not flattening out? If that were if they didn't have those little backing foam dots on there, I could push that and it could all collapse. Um, so that is why I do take a bit of extra caution. I'm gonna put this on there for a second so it holds down that stem while it dries. I might even try and bend these a little, just curl them to make them dimensional. That's why um, I like to put those extra dots back there. Now while this is drying, I could do some of the other things that I did to the other one. So let me get my little gray wash here. I don't know though. I actually kind of like that it's it's really plain, although I do wish she had some kind of eye because I, I just like to pull out those features. So I think I'm just going to put a bit of shading around her eye, let that dry and sink in for a second. And I'll put a bit of detail there and I might just be good to leave it like that. You can see the difference of if you don't run around the edge of each piece and you don't add some of that dimension in with the grayscale, can you see how much lighter it looks and how much flatter it looks? Um, because each of the pieces, even though there's a shadow that's cast because they're they're raised from each other, they're not outlined and defined as each individual piece. So this is a good tip if you really want to make sure it stands out, um, especially if things are a little more abstract. It's probably a little bit safer to kind of define things that are a little more abstract because then they look intentional. If you leave them kind of vague and unclear, they, sometimes they can look like mistakes. But that's only when things get a little, well, I mean, I don't know, maybe for the most part. I don't tend to worry. I just, I can hear people saying like, mine doesn't look like this. And why does mine look like this? Um, every time I try to teach a tutorial, I try to take on what might eventually happen for some people. So um, my top tip is that you should probably outline each piece, if not in gray, because gray is a little boring sometimes. Um, if you've got vintage, take one of your Tombow markers and outline it with a, um, you know, a brown or something. It'll catch just the nicest little um, like antique distress on the edge. Um, you'll see Tim Holtz do this a lot, actually, just straight up with the ink pad. If you just want to run it across the ink pad, all the edges. But if you've cut out some of these more detailed shapes, they might not catch all of the ink. So even if you've done it all and you think, oh no, I, 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 it's already stuck down. I'm, just, I'm doing this with a Tombow marker, just hitting the edge with that brush. And it's having the same effect. So... Don't stress too much. There's a lot you can fix afterwards if you feel like you've, you want to change something, but it would obviously be easier to do it before you stuck it down. Do I always do that? No. <laughs> and I'm only doing this to show you right now, but that is what I would recommend to you. Also to, uh, if you've got one of these gray brushes, you could put, start putting some of those shadows in. I know I said I probably wasn't going to do it, but I'll do it a little bit. I just want to show you that it's it's not all lost if you got to this point and you were like, oh, I didn't color anything in or I didn't put any detail in. You can still do it now. And so I should just show that. <laughs> just a bit on the inside of that handle and put a bit under the neck and just traveling down the lines of that flower. And just a bit on the bottom of that spout. 
So even then, we've already started to... I'll put some on the leaves as well. We've started to dimensionalize everything. I didn't do this before, but I think I really want to make that eye pop by putting a little bit of white on there. My Uniball Signo White gel pen. And then getting a brush pen. A black one, I think. Something really bold. Because nothing else on this is really, you know, black, deep, dark black. Um, anything that you put on here in black will stand out, so proceed with caution. I'm not going to, but <laughs> just a suggestion. I'm gonna put some lashes on. If you made a mistake, then just cut out an eye and stick it on top. <laughs> that would also work. But yeah, I mean, this is, this is uncomfortable to draw on and put details on, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. So I'm just gonna put some details on. Ones that I would typically add if I were just drawing it, I think. Just some hairline details. I might even grab some paint to, um, some watercolour just to tint certain parts of it that I think need a bit of help. That's probably a bit too dark, but I can add some water and <laughs> get it off. Maybe we could add our, um, colouring style method to this piece as well. If I just started splattering on some, some colour. But this is all fun. Hopefully you're seeing that if, if the result is super weird and whimsical and wacky that you don't have to stress over it. You can just enjoy the process of cutting up your papers, putting your products to good use, thinking outside the box a little bit, um, assembling things, problem solving with your paper stacks and seeing if you're doing it right. <laughs> it's just seeing what happens. You do learn along the way. You learn a lot actually. Um, it may not be useful to you right now, but um, certainly things I've learned through these processes in the past have helped me. Even when I've gone to Photoshop things, um, I've developed a really uh, solid understanding of layers and what what will go underneath and what will go on top of things, which oddly enough helps me when I'm Photoshopping files together and I have a lot of layers to figure out. Um, even practicing this skill, I feel like, has attributed to... Um, being a bit more proficient in that. Maybe only the tiniest bit, but I'm gonna claim it anyway. <laughs> oh, I just thought I was gonna put some of my um, coffee splatters on there. I'm gonna do that because I liked it. There you go. I might put some pink on there as well because that just looks crazy too. I love the splatters. I was going through a big phase of splattering around Christmas and I'm back. <laughs> We've circled back round. I'll let that dry. I'll uh, do some nice little close-up shots of both shops. Shots. I'll do some nice little close-up shots of both at the end. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, and whatever version you decided to try of that. Or um, yeah, don't worry if you don't have the stamp sets. You can do it with anything that you can substitute it with. Um, even if you just like the idea of the coloring styles, or you just wanted to have a go at drawing what you saw on the screen today absolutely be my guest. These tutorials are here for you to learn and have fun and enjoy them and uh, try them. So thank you again for joining me. I'll see you again really, really soon. This has been a Concepts 3 stamp set tutorial slash tag Tuesday slash paper stacking craft <laughs> video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Bye.